How can you add cross-platform hand tracking features for VR and MR experiences? What about capturing custom hand gestures with a very robust workflow? Well, today I'll help you answer those questions and many more. And to begin, we'll set up a new project with hands as a primary input. We'll learn to enable hand meshes and joints visibility, also how to obtain hands and joint data from the underlying XR hand subsystem and capture a variety of custom gestures with the help of the new XR hand capture feature. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new project called XR Hands Capture Demo. Then go into the package manager and make sure that you have XR Hands. Just install it and also download the hand visualizer and gestures samples. Then we're gonna be installing also the XR Interaction Toolkit. Rename your scene and then just remove the global volume. All right, just to get things started in the scene, we're gonna be adding an XR Origin VR. Then just delete the main camera. Then if you expand it, we can go into the camera offset and we're gonna be creating a component that is going to allow us to basically capture the hand information and display the mesh, display joints. So go into the demos that we just downloaded and we're gonna be associating one of the materials. That way we can see the hands on the actual scene when we deploy it. So that's gonna be the hand mesh material. We're also gonna need the velocity prefab. So just go ahead and associate it and you have multiple options in here. I'm gonna set it to none for now. And then the debug draw prefab, I wanna see the joints. So that's gonna be the component that we're gonna be using. Main camera is associated correctly and then we can just go ahead and clear or log. Then we also need to basically have models, right? For the left and right hand. So we're gonna be associating the left hand and the right hand and also Android XR has a specific rig for the hand, so we're gonna be adding that as well. So this is just an example of how the hand will look like. And you can just drag it and drop it just as a reference so that you know what we're adding. And you can see here all the different vertices, and you can also customize that if you wanted to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and switch these to Android. If you're using Unity 6.1 or greater, there is going to be a new MetaQuest build profile, so just make sure that you use that instead. Then go into the XR plugin management and there's gonna be a lot of errors in here. Don't worry about that for now. And then what we're gonna do though, after we enable OpenXR for both platforms, just make sure that we also enable the features and add the interaction profiles. In this case, I'm gonna be adding the Oculus Touch controller profile. And then we're also gonna be enabling the features that we're gonna need for hands. These are needed because we need to get that information from the, basically from the back end. Now that we're good to go, we can go ahead and open this up in Meta Link. And this is only gonna work for PC that where you can actually hit play. But you can see that in Unity now we can see the hands and this is happening all in real time, right? I'm moving my hands and now we can see the joints in here. If you're using a Mac, you can deploy to the actual device. And you can see how the different transforms move as we're moving our hands. So now if we go back into the package manager, just go ahead and search for Meta and we're gonna be installing the Unity OpenXR Meta component. That way we can get additional features that are gonna allow us to basically get closer to the platform. In this case, this one is going to allow us to basically enable pass-through, which is what I wanna do. I wanna have pass-through features so that we have pass-through and also hands. I'm also gonna change the environment color here because we need to basically see the pass-through. We don't wanna see the skybox. And also add an AR camera manager, which is gonna be required. All right, let's see how this works. So you can see that we have pass-through. My hands are rendering correctly. We're running here with MetaLink and we know that pass-through and hands are working correctly. Okay, so the next part, we're gonna be focusing on how we can actually get joints information within C-sharp. So I have a C-sharp class that is called place object uh, hands join, which we're gonna be looking at right now. And this is gonna basically allow us to place a uh, object right at a specific join. So we're gonna have a placement prefab, which is the first serializable field that I just designated. We also need to know, okay, do we need the left hand or the right hand? So I assign these by default to that right hand. We also need to know which join to place this game object on. So I'm gonna be basically accessing that by using the XR hand join ID. And then I also need to know where to place it as a parent. So we're gonna be creating that game object. And the XR hand subsystem is what's going to allow us to basically read the join information from the hands. And then the placement instance is gonna be basically the instance that we're creating of the object 
that we're going to be instantiating. Then this method right here, it's going to try to wait until, well, it's not gonna try, it's actually gonna wait until it can get the information from hands. And the way that you do that is by accessing subsystems or multiple of them by using the components that Unity provides. In this case, XR hand subsystem is the one that we need. So we're gonna wait until this is running. That way we know that we can get the data from the designated hand. So this is gonna be an enumerator. So we'll just call this from another function, which is gonna be right from the unenable method. Then on the update, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that that was actually a sign. If it's not a sign, I'm gonna return. If it is a sign, I'm gonna determine, okay, which hand do I need to get the data from? Or in this case, I need to know which hand so that we can place the object at the right location. Then I'm gonna be getting the join, right? Like what join do I want to place this object on? So now what we can do though is we can assign this to our hand visualizer and then I can just add my placement parent which is gonna be basically the hand visualizer and then you can designate what join this is gonna be on. Now we're gonna be creating a placement object. It's gonna be a very simple game object. I'm just gonna do a sphere with the red color and then with some transparency. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I place the left hand here on the editor view so that you can see the size. I recommend you to do that so that you know, you know, if it's a more comprehensive object, then you know how it's going to look like in reality, right? Okay, so this is how it looks like. I'm placing that on my index finger on the right hand. If I were to change the joint, you can see that now I can see it on my left hand. And this is all happening in real time, which is really cool. So looks like this is working. Just play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So now what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and take a look at the hand gesture scene. And this is one of the scenes that we downloaded to test some of the information that we get from hands. We're gonna be importing here the Text Mesh Pro components because it's gonna basically read a lot of the information and display a lot of information in labels. So let's go ahead and import the hand capture example. I'm gonna go back into XR Hands and then make sure that you import it. Once you're imported, we're gonna be looking at how these can actually allow you to create custom gestures, right? This is really cool because we can deploy this scene and it's going to allow us to record different gestures, just like if you were recording a video. And then based on that video, we're gonna be able to select what part of the video, in this case, is gonna be the gestures, we can actually start detecting. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy it. Just make sure that you select that scene. And then you can see here the steps that are required we can you know just basically hit start and once you hit start it's going to start recording the well it won't start recording it until you hit record so once you hit record you can start doing different gesture don't worry about being perfect that's the beauty about this system we're going to be able to tweak it once we download the gestures and then you can give the gestures a name okay so now hit save so if you go into the xr hand capture component here this is going to be a custom inspector make sure that you have your quest device connected via usb-c and then we can click on import from connected headset once you do that you're going to see that it downloads the two different files that we created you didn't see both files being created but one of them was shown to you once i was actually doing it here a few seconds ago and then yeah once you do it it's going to download it it's going to have all the different information for the gestures that we just recorded and the beauty of it it's going to be once we add these files to the inspector we're going to be able to see all the different gestures that i capture the cool thing with this though is we can just select which custom gestures we're going to be able to detect and then this is really flexible right if you want to do two fingers three finger detection if you have a custom gesture that your app is going to implement, then this is gonna allow you to do that. So let's try that rock, paper, scissor here. Looks like I capture rock, paper, scissor. This is gonna be the hand. I'm gonna show you how we can start downloading some of these. So these are gonna be hand shapes. That's the way that I actually went ahead and implemented. So if we go in here and then create a new hand shape, just give it a name. I'm gonna match the name of the gesture that I want to detect. I'm gonna create multiple of them. These are not gonna have anything just yet. I'm just gonna clone them all. So we're gonna need paper, rock, and scissors. Then drag it and drop it into the inspector here. Compute the finger values, and then you can go ahead and tweak them if you want, and then just hit save to override those values. So now the paper here has the actual values of the hand shape for that detection that we wanna do on the gesture. So now if you go back into the hands basic scene that I created, you can do this on a new scene if you like to we can go ahead and add the hand shape completeness calculator. 
And this is something that it was already implemented by Unity. I'm going to use it and I'm going to show you how that's implemented on the back end. And I'm also going to be adding another component here, which is called the XR hand tracking events. This is going to allow us to track events on the hands. So if the hands get updated, we can get updated joints information. And I'm going to show you how this is used on the back end. But basically, we're going to be listening to those events and then just add or detect gesture, which is going to be a custom C sharp script that you can create and assign to this object. So we need the XR hand tracking events, which I just show you that we can add to this game object. I just have a reference in here. I also need an array of XR hand shapes, also a gesture detection interval so that we know how frequently we're going to be checking for custom gestures, what the minimum detection threshold is going to be, and then also the calculator that I just show you to detect what the value of the custom gesture is when it's trying to do the detection. And I'm going to show you how that works. So this new method joins update is going to be the one that it's going to be triggered once we get updates from our event here. So once we get an update, that's going to be called. And then that way we can start checking for the condition. If that time of the interval has passed, then we can go ahead and basically do the check, which we're going to go and loop through each one of the hand shapes. And then we're going to be passing all these different arguments to the hand shape completeness calculator to detect if the completeness score is going to have the minimum value that we're looking for. If it has the minimum value that we're looking for, which is greater than the threshold, then we're going to say, yeah, we detected the actual custom gesture. If not, it's not going to display anything to the log. And then let's go ahead and associate these components that are required. We're also going to be adding the hand shapes that we're looking for. So we're looking for rock, paper, scissor. I also have other ones that I added before just as a reference. So I have a rock, a paper, scissors, gun, and also two fingers. And you can see that it's all working now. We can do basically rock, paper, scissors in the system. It's actually detecting it. You can see the console on the left side giving us the score values and also the correct shape detection is happening. Well, let me know what you think about the features that I show you today in the comments below, specifically the new XR hand capture feature. If you would like to explore the XR hands project, grab it from GitHub. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching and happy XR coding, everyone.